Welcome to the Pulse Debit Resource Center, your source for trends and developments affecting the debit industry. I'm Steve Siebert with Pulse Marketing and Communications. Even before Dodd-Frank and Regulation II implementing the Durbin Amendment, compliance and regulatory issues were consistently top of mind for most financial institutions. Now, in the wake of those landmark events, many issuers have had to devote significant time and resources to ensure they comply with those new rules and regs. Joining me today is Vivika Ware, Senior Vice President of Regulatory Policy for the Independent Community Bankers of America. Vivika, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, there is certainly a lot going on in the industry from both a regulatory and compliance perspective, but what are the most pressing issues keeping your member bank executives up at night? Well, the number one issue on the payments horizon has to do with the compression of income. That compression of income is due to increasing compliance cost and also increasing scrutiny as to how they offer the products and services products and services such as remittance, remittance transfers, overdraft services, payment cards. Regulation II certainly a significant development for the industry. What should your member financial institutions be doing to track the impact of the interchange cap? Well, it's really important that our members recognize that although they are not subject to the regulated interchange cap, they, it's really important that they understand the potential impact on their, their banks. And in order to do that, they need to have a formal process in place for measuring the revenue as well as the expenses. And ultimately to understand the impact on the bottom line. Do you feel as though banks have a good handle on both the, the revenue stream and the costs associated with their debit card programs, or is that an area that they can strengthen? That's certainly an area they can strengthen. Um, and again, we recommend sitting down and talking with their processes to get a thorough understanding of the statements that are available, and also um, work with staff to make sure that they understand all of the components. The industry received some relief late last year when the President signed the ATM Fee Disclosure Bill into law. What should your banks know about this new law? Well, financial institutions need to know that they no longer have to maintain uh, signs at the ATMs indicating that a fee may be assessed on a transaction. This was really a problematic area for financial institutions because frequently individuals removed those signs and then came back and said, okay, you're not in compliance with the law, we're now going to sue you. So that's no longer a concern. So let's talk a minute about remittance transfers. I know they're causing a significant amount of angst among banks and the CFPB is looking into this issue right now. What's the latest? The good news is that the CFPB is revisiting some of the more problematic provisions of its rule. Those problematic provisions are the disclosure of foreign taxes as well as beneficiary fees and holding the bank sending the, tr the transfer responsible for incorrect account information provided by the sender. And they've already announced a delay in the final rule. and while they work through uh, revising the rule. Okay. And Vivika, what can we expect to see from a regulatory perspective on both prepaid and overdraft services? Well, on both fronts, we know that the CFPB is looking at the services. With regard to prepaid cards, they issued a, an advance notice of proposed rulemaking last year. And that's the strong signal that there will be a formal rulemaking process going forward. Now, on the overdraft services front, they also issued a request for information last year, and they're in the process of evaluating those responses as well as evaluating the existing rules and regulations and agency guidance concerning those services. So we do expect additional action in 2013. So certainly already a number of issues that we're tracking in the regulatory and compliance space, but are there even more on the horizon? Well, you're going to see a lot of uh, analysis around mobile payments and what they mean to the industry and whether there are adequate consumer protections in place. I don't foresee any action at this point. Um, another item that's not regulatory, but it's really a marketplace-driven initiative has to do with the 
rollout of chip-based payment cards. And that certainly requires the attention of all financial institutions. Well, Vavika, we really appreciate you being here today. Thank you. My pleasure. And check back often for additional updates and insights right here on the Pulse Debit Resource Center. You can also follow debit industry issues on the Pulse on Debit blog. Find it at pulsenetwork.com forward slash blog. Until next time, I'm Steve Siebert.